One of the memes that's arisen around me is that I care about dress code just for the sake of it. I know it's funny to go after politicians for dressing badly, but at its core, the reason that I do it is because I believe in this maxim. The job of those in public service is to serve. No, a suit is not the most comfortable garment. The point is that those in positions of power, as we all do when we attend a wedding, you don a garment as a sign of respect for those that we appear before. Increasingly, people in so-called public service don't really believe in the service part at all. They've donned the garments of the upper middle class elite who are capable of working from anywhere in comfort. They insist on rules in place that allow them to openly trade stocks while remaining privy to incredibly sensitive and private information. And now, they increasingly don't even really believe in doing even the smallest part of their job at all. The slow death of Congress has not just been about its ability to get things done, but its transformation into a body of open narcissists who view the office not as a place to do anything, but accept to use their perch in public service to attain wealth and power after they serve. This is especially the case in recent days with the news of several high-profile retirements in the House GOP caucus. This monologue was inspired by Congressman Mike Gallagher. He's a man I've met. I've even interviewed him, respected him at one point. But recently, he announced that he was retiring from Congress. I have no problem with that. The news, though, that came next is what set me off. Gallagher announced not only was he retiring from Congress and would not seek another term, but that he was abruptly resigning the office at the end of April. This is galling for two reasons. One, if Gallagher, Gallagher has any sense of duty to his party, the House GOP now has just a majority of 217 votes in Congress, meaning that the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world and Matt Gaetzes and the Freedom Caucus members who all want to cause trouble have even more power. It also means that the sheer business of doing the most basic minimums of passing bills just got so much harder for the House GOP. But two, is that Gallagher not decided not just to resign for no reason and to leave his term early, more so, it appears that his resignation date is specifically designed so that no special election can be held because it falls after the deadline. Meaning, his 600,000 constituents will not have anyone in Congress to do their basic bidding from April to November. But it gets even worse when you find out why he's leaving his constituents high and dry. It's not just that he's quitting. But Puck News reports that Gallagher appears to be resigning to take a high-paying job at Palantir, one of the largest defense contracting firms in the U.S. It's not a surprise. Gallagher was a leading defense hawk in Congress. I had serious disagreements with him, for example, on Ukraine. But it is his sheer brazenness. Going Congress, where you were elected to do a job, you then resign early because the vibes are bad, and then you take a job where we can easily imagine him getting paid, what, at least a million bucks a year? Here's the thing. I get it. I wouldn't want to be in Congress either with some of these jackasses, but I'm a private citizen. I have a YouTube show. I have more of a sense of duty to the people who pay for this show than it seems like Mike Gallagher. For me, it's simple. It's a contract. Unless I'm very sick or there's a personal emergency, I show up to do the show because that's what people pay hard-earned money for. Is it so much to ask that same attitude for people who represent us in Congress and who pass our laws that they feel even remotely the same? Apparently, it is too much to ask. It's not just Gallagher. Congressman Ken Buck, another man who's been on this show in the past, abruptly resigning from Congress after announcing he won't seek another term. At least he did so when they could still have a special election. By all accounts, there's no reason that he needed to quit. He just decided to, except maybe the reporting that he's set to become a CNN contributor. He denied it. We'll see how it ends up. Kevin McCarthy, he also resigned late last year at the end of 2023. He gave no reason. Yeah, I get it. He got booted from his speakership. That's embarrassing. That doesn't mean you can't still do and stay the basic job. It's just constituent services. He's a powerful man. Not since, though, he's left. He's still been showing up on Capitol Hill. He's here in Washington right now. He's doing speeches all over TV. In other words, he resigned his job so he could actually do what he wanted to do. All the public profile without any of the annoying serving the people part. In every case, we have people who are putting themselves and their preferences first, first above the party that they supposedly care about, who have to run the house, and now above the people who elected them to serve. That is how they think about the job. It's just a way station on the way to wealth and power when things get boring. It's wrong, and we shouldn't accept this as normal. Some people might even say it's always been this way, and I think it has to some degree, but now it is so out in the open. They just want the paychecks, the power, the prestige, the fame. That's it. They don't care at all about serving you. Even the pretense doesn't matter anymore. We should hear them loud and clear. Remember that too, the next time that we cast our votes. How crazy is this? This man is- Hey guys, obviously I had a lot of thoughts on what Sagar had to say there. So if you wanna see my thoughts on this monologue and every other Sagar monologue, make sure you subscribe at breakingpoints.com.